Hey, what's up there? This is Ryan Nickel coming at you with another Bootstrap REI coaching tip. All right, so I'm heading down to uh, Sacramento. I live in uh, Yuba City, which is about an hour north of Sacramento, and I'm heading down to Sacramento to do some speaking tonight. I'm speaking at a, a meetup group with uh, one of my mentors, Alexis McGee, um, one of the smartest ladies I know in real estate, man. That lady has it down, and she is on point when it needs to be, and she does not let anything get by. I mean, it, she's like... She's so like tight when it comes down to negotiation. So anyway, I'm always looking forward to meeting up with her. And uh, she's been gracious enough to, to share this opportunity with me to let me go ahead and co-present with her on Skinny Deals. And so um, I was going ahead and I was, I was putting together my, my PowerPoint presentation. And uh, one of the things that came on was, uh, that I came up was how to do the math. How to do, do the down and the dirty. And so I want to share with you a couple of the things that I'm sharing and speaking about tonight on doing Skinny Deal math. I got people coming in here and I don't know we know who. I can't see your comments, so I always want to say hi, what's up, but anyway. It is what it is. Can't see it, so we're good. Alright, so skinny deal math. So basically there are when I'm buying a property or when I'm looking at buying a property, there are three things that I look for. These three things are current loan amount. Actually, there's four things. But I don't really get into the fourth one. Actually, I'll share everything with you. So first one is loan amount, the default amount, and then ARV. Those are the three things I look at when I am doing my, my analysis. And so what I'm looking at is how much does this person owe? How much are they behind on their payments? And of course, what is it worth or what could it be worth if it was all fixed up? And so I'm looking at this and I'm trying to find my equity position. And what I'm looking for is that gap, that spread between what they owe and what it could owe or what it could go for. I'm looking to find myself in the middle there. And what I'm looking to do is I take the 10% rule. And my 10% rule is this, is whatever their default amount is, if the ARV 10% of the after repair value, the future, the, the all fixed up value, if 10% of that is greater than the default amount, I am all in. I'm going for this one. And the reason for that is I can get 10% down on an owner finance deal and I can be, and I can make, I, I can be made whole. So any money, if I'm going to put any of my own, own money in it, which I don't, but if I were to put my own money in, I'd be made whole again from my, from the person who I sell it to. So my, my rule is a 10% rule. Anything above 10% that I get, which sometimes I get 10, sometimes I get 15 or 20. It all depends on the deal and it all depends on the person and it all depends on what the, how we structure it. But my first blush at it is 10%. Is 10% is of ARV, is that number greater than the default amount? If it is, great. And I'm looking at that and I also look at, okay, what is the, the loan amount to see if I have enough spread to, to go ahead and sandwich myself in between this deal and make something going on. Now I kind of teased you, there's a fourth one out there. That fourth one that I look at is what is their monthly payment? Now their monthly payment cannot be more by a, by a long shot. It can be okay if it's a, more a little bit, but not all by a long shot. I want it to be traditionally lower than what fair market rents are in that area. So if their monthly payment is $2,500 and fair market rent is $1,200, I am passing on that particular opportunity as the seller finance deal. Like I might do something else, but I'm not gonna do a seller finance deal because that does not make sense because why would someone rent? Or why would someone buy the house when they can rent for far cheaper, save up a lot more money and go buy a house somewhere else? It just does not make sense. So anyway, I all, you always have to take into consideration what the monthly payment is. Now for me, ideally, I'm going to look for an opportunity where I can go ahead and sandwich myself in there and I want to collect the monthly cash flow spread as well. So I want to get a minimum of $250 per door. So $250 per month on that particular deal. If I can't get $250, i am just going to take the down payment and then just assign it over to the person and just be done with it. Collect some cash and move on. That's all I'm going to do. So that's, that's how I buy. Now, when I'm selling, there's three ma there's three things that I want to consider when I am talking to a, a seller. I'll go deeper on these in the future. I'll just give you the overview on these ones right now. So when I'm talking to, excuse me, when I say a, a buyer, when I'm talking to a buyer, I want to know three numbers from them. How much do they make a month? How much can they afford to make or make a payment? What's the maximum they can pay on a monthly payment? And dun, 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 how much money do you have now and in the future available for a down payment? 
Now, I learned that from one of my, my mentors. His name was Joe McNamee. Brilliant man when it comes to getting the most out of every single deal. And Joe said, Ryan, you need to ask people, what do you have available right now for a down payment? And what do you have available for yourself in the future for a down payment? Because, I mean, here we are in November. Tax season's just around the corner. They might not have the full amount today to get into a house, but come two months from now, they're gonna get a lot more money in a tax fund, tax refund. So that's an option. So you always wanna be asking, what do they have available in the, in the future? And so I'm looking at what's the maximum that they can pay on a monthly payment, what is the most that they can put down now and in the future, and of course, what do they have to work with as far as income right now? Now, I'm not a, I'm not a bank, I'm not a qualifying them, I'm not gonna say, oh, you know, your gross adjusted income, I'm not gonna take this information here, I'm gonna have to go ahead and take this rent and go ahead and subtract out the information because I can't give you that full amount. I don't care about that at all in the least bit. What I'm looking for is how much money do you have available? Are you? Are you dog sitting for people? You got money under the table? You got disability? You got alimony? I don't care what it is as long as there's money coming in. And I love people that are disabled. I love to give them houses because one, I am helping them fulfill a need. I'm giving them a dream and an opportunity. And two, the income is guaranteed. As long as our good old Uncle Sam, Uncle Sam doesn't go bankrupt, which who knows what could happen in the future. But for the most, for the time being right now, that money is guaranteed coming into my bank account every single month. And I love that. So I look at what is all the cumulative money you have coming in? Because if the deal is skinny on monthly payments, I'm gonna see how much they can afford. I've had families that are making $7,500 a month. Seven, five, zero, zero, seven thousand five hundred dollars And they told me, the most I can afford is $1,200. Now, if I wouldn't have got all their information of all members in their household, not just the people that are trying to get the house, but all members of their household, I would have missed out an opportunity of being able to collect more money monthly because they make a lot more money than what they are saying on paper. Anyway, I'm Ryan Nicole. These are some just down and dirty quick tips that I use when I'm qualifying people over the phone, whether it's a seller or whether it's a buyer. Hope it helps you. Go out and make some money. I'll talk to you later. Cheers.